Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about sound of science. Can you hear that, Higgins? Yeah. There's a lot of things that. to talk about with sound. We can't do it in one episode. We're talking about ah! just lasered me. Stop. We're talking about the sounds of science. Watch this, I'm gonna laser you. We're gonna talk about waves, compression waves. We're gonna talk about transverse waves. We're gonna, hey, oh, that hurts. We're gonna talk about all these things and how you can do some pretty cool sounds Steven. using some... Hold on, Higginsworth is calling me. Oh, he's got an idea. It's gonna take him 30 seconds to tell me while you watch this. Ouch, you lasered me. I'm Steve Spangler, and I'm all about making science fun. For the last 20 years, I've been teaching ways to turn ordinary science experiments into unforgettable learning experiences. I have an amazing team who will do whatever it takes to affect the way people think about science. And to do that, I live by one motto. Make it big, do it right, give it class. Before we get to the sound hoses and how cool those are, you need to see how a regular spring kind of works here in terms of creating a wave, because it's a wonderful way to do it. This is a very, very long spring. Watch this. Is it, are you holding it, Higgins? Yeah. All right, so watch this. As I start to, uh, to move it back and forth like this, we create a simple wave. Now, as we're looking at the wave here, you can see the center that doesn't really move that much. That's the node, of course. The amplitude is how high it is, or how loud it is. The frequency is represented by the number of waves that we have. So there's not much frequency here, but I could change it like this. Now we have lots of frequency. We have multiple nodes, and I'm making it louder by increasing the amplitude. Well. This is fun on the table, but what makes these fun is the sound that you get. Here, Higgs, put that away. Got it? These are called space phones. They've uh, a toy that's been around for years and years and years. Unfortunately, the good ones are hard to find. And, and the difference here is that instead of just moving the spring back and forth, they're actually hooked to a membrane that's here. And this, the funnel down there, is where the sound is amplified. So if I give this into Higgins, ready? Here you go, Higgins with. Now we get the same thing on the table that we had before. Listen to this. But we get the sound with it as well. So now watch, if you lift it up here, now we get to see how some musical instruments actually work by being able to send sound through the spring. So listen to this. If I send the vibration here, send it down the spring, for Higgins, he'll be able to hear this. Higginsworth! Kind of a space sound, don't you think? Go ahead, send some of the back. Steven! He couldn't really come up with anything better than Steven, but I came up with Higginsworth. We're still both not doing very well. Uh, but now listen to this. This is our wave that we can see, but it doesn't change the sound. Hello! It's still the same vibration. So this is what's considered a transverse wave. Watch this transverse wave, moving it up and down like this, this is a transverse wave. Now, if we happen to hit it at any time here, watch this, as we stretch it out here, watch this, if we hit here like this, watch. You can actually see a compression wave move itself down and back. Here, try it again. Watch the compression wave. See how it moves back and forth? Believe it or not, Star Wars, uh, the very, very first Star Wars, the special effects artist said they used something very similar to have those sounds, those little laser sounds. Doesn't seem like you'd use something this archaic, but it's very, very cool. And here, you can stop me from lasering you by simply pinching here. So if you can stop the vibration here, listen, I can hit it. Here, it's deadened. You can see the compression wave, but we don't get that great sound that's there. Go ahead, laser me a good one. Space phones. Science nerd must. Ouch. So loud. <laughs> All right, so this is great. You can make one if you want to. You could make it huge if you want to, but this is also a toy that you can find at a local toy store. It's called a thunder tube. Look, it's just a, a piece of cardboard tube. There is a, there's a good drum here on this end, but hooked to the drum, as you can kind of see inside, is the spring. So it's pretty easy. The spring being right here, now can vibrate. So when you get the vibration here, that now is resonated with the drum. And in order to get sound to your ear, it's all about moving molecules here 
to your ear and causing your, uh, your eardrum to vibrate. So here, listen to this. Sounds good. So it's a thunder tube. You can imagine what this would sound like if you had a great big huge steel drum and a, and a, and a huge spring outside the budget of this show, but it would be very, very cool, right? And you can use the flicking action as well. So listen, so it kind of sounds like there's lightning. So this, that sounds awesome. So you're thinking, is this just a toy? No, there's a really good use for this. So let's say, mm, I don't know, grandma calls and grandma calls and she wants to talk to you for like three hours and you're trying to get off the phone going, love you grandma, love you grandma. All you have to do is this, so while you're talking to her, you go like this. Oh, Grandma, there's a lightning storm. I gotta get off the phone. Okay, bye. Well, talk to you later. Love you, bye. Works like a charm. Well, in all seriousness, this is one of my favorite physics demonstrations. I wanted to learn how to do this. I had read about it. Uh, I had heard people talk about it, could never do it. It uh, ended up that a professor at the University of Texas, uh, Dr. Baez, taught me how to do this. And uh, I, my technique was just a little wrong. So I'll show you all the secrets that you need. It truly is the world's most annoying science experiment. People will ask, beg you to stop doing it. I will promise you. Uh, this is an aluminum rod. So the only thing that I've found that really works are these aluminum rods. And you can find a piece of aluminum sometimes at the hardware store like this. Um, in a chemistry lab, they used to have uh, pieces of aluminum rod with different things that would hook onto it to hold beakers and so forth. So maybe somebody playing with it that way kind of figured it out. But we get two different kinds of waves out of this. So um, here, take a uh, listen to this. Let me use uh, this one right here. So here's our aluminum rod. If I hold it in the very center, right, so I don't dampen it, listen to this. That's a transverse wave. If we could actually see the wave, it would be a transverse wave. But you're actually getting two notes in here at the same time. You might be able to hear the high-pitched note. Listen. That really high pitch kind of lingering. Hear that? I can actually make that high-pitched note happen uh, a little easier if I just hit the end. Hear that sound? That's the annoying compression wave. That's the same as us pulling the spring back, back, letting it go or flicking it and watching the compression wave go down and back and forth versus that transverse wave. So here's what we're gonna do is um, you're gonna need to have the aluminum rod and you're also gonna need to have some rosin for your fingers. What I found best for this, and this is one of the secrets that, uh, that he taught me, is that you go to the music store and you find cello rosin, you know, the kind that they actually use on the bow for the cello, but you're gonna have to take that and use a hammer and and pound it out in a bag so that it really is ground up like this. Some people will say, well, I've used rosin for um, gymnastics. It doesn't seem to work. This is the one that works the best for me. And what I'm going to do is this. If it's a brand new aluminum rod and I've never done the demo before, I need to get some of the cello rosin here and I need to coat the, the rod with this. So I'm going to coat this and I just need to get it kind of worked in. All right, so this is gonna take uh, a little practice, but you're gonna hold it in the very center, almost like you're doing a, a center of gravity demonstration. So hold it in the center so it's balanced. And now it's stick and slide. It's kind of like on the basketball court where your, your basketball shoes stick and then slide and gives that kind of screeching sound. Well, listen to this. I pull it across here and I stick and slide. I can almost, I can almost hear it starting Hear that little part? And then I'm stopping it, so I've got to let go. So watch this. That's it. Here it is. The most ear-piercing sound you can imagine. It's coming from the very end. You can actually feel it vibrating at that point here. So it's just amazing that you can get that sound, not having to hit it or anything. If I change, the, uh, the length of it, listen to this, much higher. I'm not saying this is a great way to get people excited about science, but you will have every dog in the neighborhood wherever you're doing the demonstration. That's the singing rod. If you understand the principle of stick and slide using the singing rod and you didn't think that was annoying, just wait until you learn how to do this. Again, another favorite demonstration because it took a little time to practice. It's not one of those things that you just pick up and do. And but once you learn how to do it, it's very, very cool. And it's understanding vibration using a saw. Vibrating a saw, not a very exciting thing because it doesn't give you a great sound. 
And if you're not careful, it'll cut yourself. And people always ask, is it a real saw? Of course it is. You, I told you you had to head to the hardware store, but you'll notice here that the teeth have been filed down. And how do we do that? Just took it outside on a piece of concrete or a rock and just ran it back and forth for about 10 minutes so that it would uh, dull this. Um, it doesn't hurt the sound of the saw at all. And it's not a very expensive saw, but I knew that this one would work because if you're sitting uh, at the hardware store, uh, you kind of get one of those orange buckets, if you know what I mean. Sit in the aisle that has the saws. And you gotta be careful because you can't dull it there. But here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna actually pinch this between your legs here like this and hold on to it up here. Because when we hit it like this, and I put a little bend, can you see the S curve that's in the saw? See it? Here's that S curve that's there. When I hit it, listen to this. Ah, oh, that's gonna be a good sound. Yeah, you know this is gonna be a good saw. It was probably $12. It's probably not a great saw for sawing wood, but it's great for learning how to play the saw. Only other thing you need, a violin bow. Well, a word about the violin bow, because if you buy a new one, they're about 75 bucks. But if you find a used one, if you go to like a music store uh, at the end of a school season, when all the kids have turned in the instruments that they practiced for so long, you can pick up these that are not in great shape, but they're perfect for the saw for 10 to $20. So I'm gonna tighten it up here. These horse's hairs are perfect. And then we have uh, some of that violin or the cello rosin that's here. And I just need to, um, to get this nice and sticky. All right, so here we go. It's stick and slide. So this is gonna sit here like that. I'm gonna put the little S curve. And so that S curve is important. Take a look at the thumb right here. As we bend it here like this, it's gonna hurt these fingers a little bit, but you're gonna bend it here and it's gonna give you that little curve. So find the sweet spot, which seems to be close to the middle. What you're gonna do is this, I'm holding it like this. I'm gonna actually pull across and create the vibration. So if I can create the vibration, then I can create the sound. So listen to this. Now this will be an accomplishment for a, sa a Saturday or a Sunday, right? Because you're gonna get, you're, you're not gonna get this, you're gonna get this and it's not working. You've gotta get some pressure, you've gotta bend it just a little bit. As soon as you have that, you know that you're on the right track. Okay, so there's your sound, right? Now I can change the pitch by changing the tension that I have on the, on the saw. So watch, it's just a matter of bending it, listen. Nice, all right. Good. Now there's some people who really play this all well, not me, but I can fake it enough to be able to make this vibrato sound. So it just means that I'm going to make this knee kind of shake a little bit. So I'm gonna pretend like I have a nervous knee and make it shake. So as I'm pulling it across here like this, listen. Perfect. So you get that kind of vibration, right? I feel like I'm in Hawaii. Without the niceties of Hawaii. I really feel like I'm just in Englewood, Colorado playing a saw, talking about Hawaii. My wife is so lucky. I'll serenade her. She'll go to live with her mom for a month. It's called a sound hose, and you can find them in most toy stores. Again, another great annoying uh, demonstration, and something that's likely to hit somebody in the head right next to him. Sound hose is cool because there's some great physics behind it. First thing that you need to, uh, to take a look at is the construction of the hose itself. Uh, it may look like the same kind of hose that you would use on a vacuum cleaner, but you're gonna quickly see why a vacuum cleaner hose would not be good for this. See the little corrugations that are right here? See these little ripples in the corrugations that are there? Well, those corrugations actually are in the inside as well. If you notice a, uh, uh, a hose from like a vacuum cleaner, it doesn't have those ripples. That's gonna be very, very important because those ripples truly are what uh, allow the molecules to be able to bounce around inside and literally we're throwing air molecules out. So uh, the air has to enter here and gets thrown out here. If you just think about it, there's air inside and you're just throwing the air out. And you can hear that little sound. 
But it's hard to believe that when you twirl it around this way, that the um, inertia or that centripetal force that uh, the air molecules kind of experience caused this kind of forward motion. And the pull is from here. So as you spin it around like this, air is coming inside. Let's see if I can get a really low note. That's as low as I can get. That's probably good. If I spin it faster, different pitch. Now, it may be hard to kind of comprehend that there's air actually coming in here. So, this is a, a clever way to be able to uh, show it. Uh, Paul Doherty over at the Exploratorium in San Francisco is the first person I ever saw do a demonstration like this. And it was fascinating because he just took a bag, like a dry cleaner bag, hooked it onto the bottom of the hose and blew air into it like this. All right, so now we have the bag with the air. So now as I spin it around, watch what happens to the bag, watch. You spin it around, you hear the air, the bag's getting smaller, 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 until there's no more sound because there's no more air to go up into the tube. Pretty cool way to be able to see uh, the sound, so to speak, and understand the sound of, uh, or the science of a sound hose. Now, this is also interesting because people who put in uh, gas lines for, uh, for like a home construction have to be very careful about the yellow corrugated pipe because many times gas will flow through that pipe and because it's corrugated on the inside, it's not smooth on the inside like a vacuum hose, that you can actually set up a sound so that when you turn on a fireplace, you get a high, uh, high screech kind of pitch and uh, that's all because of the sound dynamic that's set up in the hose. But I know what you're thinking. How do you make it bigger? And for that, I need Higginsworth, uh, a credit card, and a car. Block, <laughs> block, block. Oh, here's the problem. Gave Higginsworth my credit card, sent him into that store, gave him something to buy, said, make it big. Steve. I can only think. Steve. See, I told you. Got it. Not possible. What'd you get, Higgs? Uh, Two. I said make it big, and this is what you brought back. That is not it. I'll I go knew get you were it. Gonna say it. Give Wait. Me the, what? Wait. That's why I got this one. Higgs. <laughs> did, did you also buy this one? Wait. I had to for the joke. You bought this for the joke? Wouldn't have made sense if I didn't. You know. Take it back. I'll be right back. Oh, Higginsworth. This is gonna be perfect. This is gonna be, see, this is exactly what you need. It's just a big chunk of that pipe. Now, we didn't see, cut it, are we? Here oh, you go. Perfect, thank you very much. All right, huh? so here's what we're gonna do. So here, the key here is I'm gonna hold on here like this, and then you just spin it around. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Here, just stand there, just get out of my way. As I'm standing around, I have to spin it. Get out of the way, Higgs. <laughs> just, I'm gonna spin this around. You gotta get out of the way, all right? All right. Check this out, so as you spin it like this, listen. Hear it? Higgs, you got that? That's yeah, what I, I want you to it. do. Just spin it around a lot. Okay, so come here. For how long? Hang on, just take it like this and make sure there's no friends in the way when you spin it around, okay? Make sure there's no cars in the way either. All right. Okay, ready? Okay. okay. Start spinning it around. Okay, no, run around. Yes, yes, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. Go that way a little bit, no, other way. Go that way, go. Don't stop. No, I'll don't do stop. <laughs> we need to, just go fast. Okay, fast, go. There's gotta be a better way. This doesn't There's make not, any this sense. This is perfect. Go, yeah. run around, spin around. No, spin. Let's go. <laughs> Keep going. You're doing great. Don't uh, stop, whatever you do. Run, run. All right, there is a better way to do this. It involves a car and a couple people, and you don't have to stand outside and just spin it around. We now have to go get Higginsworth because he's probably sitting over there puking. All right, Higgs, get in the car. This right. is going to be fun. Unlock the door. Okay, be careful. Don't scratch anything. Okay. Okay, so here we go. All right, no, you got to move it around this way. Okay, so move it towards the back like this. Okay, you get in. Okay, move. Sorry, Steve. Move here, it around. That's fine. Move here. Move it around. Okay, you, you got that part in. No, I need this seat. end. Just switch the ends. Seat. I need this what end. What side needs to go out? Hold on. This end goes out. <sighs> All so right. Like this. 
Or okay, now you cannot impede the driver. I'm okay. the driver. Here. Okay. I you think you're that? good. Can you see? Yeah, I can see just fine. I need a little bit more slack. Okay, you can take it then. Okay, we're okay, ready. You got it? Yep. Okay, so here's the idea, Higgs, is that I'm going to drive like this. Is this safe? Yeah. It's fine. There's two people. Okay. And the air is going to come in here. The molecules are going to bounce along that tube there. It's going to set up some resonance, and we're going to see how fast we're going correlates to if it makes any sound. Okay. Got it? I'm ready. You know, and you don't look like a dork with this hanging out the window, too. This no. Is, this is not like Dorkville. I'd say, like, if you're, like, driving past a pool, and there's a lot of attractive people at the pool, this would just go, hey, look what I'm doing. This is pretty cool. <gasps> Listen to that. Is that 20 miles We're doing an hour? a science experiment. You didn't like that. Hey, can you tell this, this person here that we're doing a science experiment? Okay, tell them. We're doing a science experiment. They're having a garage sale. She waved at you with one finger. I don't think they call that a wave. <gasps> Listen to that. It's a new, new one. Listen, did you just hear that? Listen. It's getting higher pitched. Check out that sound. What speed is Listen, that? Uh, there are many speeds, because uh, I'm going fast and slow. But if you'll memorize all those, it'd be great. So 20, 22, 22, 20, 23, 2, 23. This is stopping. That's what it sounds like if you stop. I've got that one memorized. OK. All right. So here. Here we go. OK. Set it up. It's going to go pretty good. Okay, here we go. Check that out. Hear the sound? We're doing a science experiment! Listen to that sound. It almost sounds like a horn, doesn't it? It does. It sounds like a horn. It sounds incredibly like your horn. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. It does sound like a horn. That's Check amazing. Check that out. That's 40 miles an hour. That is a speed limit. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Higgins worth. We're both in trouble now. Well, almost everybody has done something with helium. And while some people are a little concerned about the, hold on just a second, <sighs> about the demonstration of breathing gases, <sighs> and I completely understand that you have to be very, very careful. It's not something I'm suggesting that you do at home. And it's not also something that I'm suggesting that you get a bunch of helium balloons. But for a demonstration, it's a perfect way to be able to understand vibration and how vibrations and the sound of a vibration is different in a different medium. For example, if I just use regular air from my lungs, right? I sound exactly the same because this is the vibration of my vocal cords going through this medium, which is 20% uh, oxygen, 79% uh, nitrogen, 1% what, everything else. So it's the density of the air, actually, that gives us um, some of that sound or the characteristics of this particular sound. Helium is six times lighter than the air we breathe. So when I breathe helium and I talk through that, my vocal cords aren't vibrating faster. It's just that these vibrations are going through a different medium, right? Now, the good thing with helium is that helium being lighter than air leaves my lungs. So I just need to pull in, get some oxygen out, or get some oxygen in, get this gas out, and that's the, the typical sound with helium. But we had to change it. And this is the very first demonstration I was ever asked to do on the Ellen DeGeneres show uh, back in 2007. Out of all the demonstrations we had done, we uh, settled on three, and this is the very first one that she ever did with me. And uh, it was kind of the first time I had seen sulfur hexafluoride done in, uh, in that way. I know there's some classic demonstrations of floating objects. This is called sulfur hexafluoride. We've done it so many times. But I wanted to give you some of the background that we probably don't uh, get a chance to, uh, to be able to explain. SF6. It's a gas that's extremely expensive. It's very heavy. It's six times heavier than the air that we breathe. So, and it's also an inert gas. So um, I can breathe it in. Uh, I can make the sounds and do the demonstrations. There's also a concern about this gas in the environment. So there's not much of this gas that we use. Um, in industry, they use 
thousands and thousands of, uh, of pounds of, of this particular gas. And so in this particular case, we're filling just a, a small balloon for demonstration purposes. You can actually hear the difference of the sulfur hexafluoride. It behaves differently even when you wiggle the balloon. It's heavier than this for sure. This particular gas is going to go into my lungs, displace all the other gases in my lungs. So what's dangerous about this is that I've got to get this gas out of my lungs. And again, this is not something that you're going to do at home, but a physics teacher or a professor may uh, very likely do this. And if that's the case, it's kind of nice to know something about it. I'm going to breathe out and pull all of this in. Ready? <sighs> Now I have a gas that's six times heavier than the air that we breathe. My vocal cords are vibrating the same way, but you can see that uh, you start to get a little lightheaded because I've displaced all the oxygen, and this is what it sounds like through the heavier gas. Hang on, I just want to do this before I die. I think I'm okay. Veterinarians actually use this gas to be able to uh, inflate uh, an animal's lungs when they're under anesthesia and to be able to shoot a picture of their lungs in a particular way uh, with their lungs completely expanded. I didn't know that before researching it. And then, of course, they have to pull that out and put oxygen in. But one of the most fascinating things about sulfur hexafluoride is that it won't support any type of combustion, like a spark. And so they literally will fill an entire room of, of high-voltage electronics with sulfur hexafluoride. Of course, humans can't be in there because there's no oxygen to breathe, but there's no way that one piece of electronics can uh, arc to another one. And so the sulfur hexafluoride uh, is a great use for that. And of course, since it's so heavy, you literally can float objects like aluminum foil boats on a tank of sulfur hexafluoride, which is something cool to watch as well. So uh, one of my, this whole episode is one of my favorites in terms of demonstrations because they are very, very cool to be able to watch. It's those unexpected kind of things that makes kids think about science. And that's all I have to say about that.